So this cylinder was left open and the cylinder itself is actually pitted. There's rust, you can just see on the tip here, and that continues all the way down. So we need to take this cylinder out, rebuild it, and just polish this, make it clean so it'll slide again. But first we need to crack this nut here loose. Right now we have it up against the cabinet, so we have some support, and we're just supporting it with our legs too, just to make sure this thing doesn't move, because this is gonna be on here tight. So let's go ahead and break it loose with a very large crescent wrench so we have plenty of leverage. And go ahead and break it loose. So we're starting to think we feel it move a little bit. Now let's try it again. The wrench likes to slip off, but I think we can finally feel it starting to move. There we go. See, it's moving right there. That's good. So we have this moving. We're just going to keep spinning this nut. You can just see how easy that's spinning now. Wow, we can even spin this by hand. So let's go ahead and take this off the rest of the way. It's kind of interesting. We actually don't see any threads on here. I'm expecting the threads will be down here. Oh, looks like we might even be able to pull it out. Okay, starting to come out a little bit there. That's good. Let's go ahead and remove the cylinder the whole way. It's definitely tight in there. Okay. Almost, there we go. A lot easier if we would've just loosened that screw there just to relieve the pressure so we would've been able to take this out easier. We definitely felt the suction trying to keep this in there. Pulling this end off here, you can just see how badly pitted the cylinder is. I mean, if you look down, it's just kind of rusted all the way through. Down here at the very end, it looks kind of like what that's supposed to, but up here, it definitely needs a lot of work. I'm going to try to modify the wood lathe a little bit to be able to fit this metal piece. What I'm gonna do is pop out the spade bit here and try to put the chuck in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this rod on the other side and tap that guy out and go ahead and pop my chuck in be running this at some low RPMs because we don't want this to fall off. What I'm off. doing is tightening this bolt down just a little bit and what this is doing is moving the tailstock out and adding pressure pushing it this way into the chuck. Now with these little keys here I can go ahead and tighten the chuck jaws. These slide in like that and it's always a tricky part to turn it the right way. This lathe has variable speed, but the belt tensions, uh, the belt gears here give me even more of a variable speed. I can get it to go really high at its top RPM or really low at its lowest RPM. Here, we're gonna want this to go really slow because we don't want this to come off in any way. So what I'm going to do is switch this over to the lowest point here. And in order to do that, what I found I'm able to do is if I just lift the belt up like this, and try to turn it. So now I have this on the lowest speed that it can go on these adjustable belt pulleys. So I can put this now back down and I have my drive motor here with a three quarter horsepower treadmill motor and this works great for the variable speed. We're standing as far away from this as we can because this is kind of scary with the big piece of metal. So I'm gonna spin this up as low as I can on the RPMs one thing I kind of find unnerving about the variable speed setup that I have here is you have to turn it until the motor builds up enough power to start turning, which is not its lowest RPM. So it'll go spinning at a, a higher RPM, then you can take it lower to its lowest RPM. So I don't think it's going to be too high. It is going to spin a little bit faster at first. We can take it down. But if this is spinning just too fast, we're not going to do it, and we're going to find another way to lay this down. That looks like it's pretty slow, that's controllable. And I could even take it slower if I wanted. About right here is as slow as we can get it. Now with some 800 grit, I'm just sanding this down and starting to get that surface rust off, and then we're gonna slowly work our way up the grits. I'm going to switch to a bigger piece of sandpaper because we wanna make sure this stays even. So when I'm sanding this, it's, not, it's, it's gonna be more consistent. There won't be any dips in it. I'm just really taking my time with this sandpaper, just making sure I get a really nice finish on this, and it's really clean. Now we're 
done with the 800 grit and we're gonna move up to 1200 grit now. I have the lathe running just a little bit faster with the higher grit here, just so it's gonna work it up a little bit more to a polish, but this is starting to look really nice. So we're adding a little bit of water to the sandpaper just so it has uh, kind of like chip clearance. It's gonna wash out the sandpaper and keep it cutting a little bit better. So this is starting to look really nice run a quick pass with some 2000 grit just to get this nice and smooth. I already can feel it's way better than what it was before. I'm going to run this at just a little bit of a higher speed to get a nice clean buff on it. nice and clean now. I have cleaned it with rubbing alcohol. I'm just giving it one last clean wipe down with a nice cotton cloth. And I'm ready to go ahead and take this off the lathe. So in order to do that, I'm going to get my two chuck keys here. This one goes in here and here. And then carefully break that loose. Take these out. Loosen that up the rest of the way. Loosen our tailstock, <laughs> a little heavy. And here's our fully polished cylinder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop this back in here and see if this works. And I'm gonna learn from our mistake, actually. Yeah, see how this is kind of stopping? It doesn't wanna go in quite as easy. Actually, this is going in pretty easy. It's easier to push it down. Oh, see how it goes back up? We need to loosen this screw down here so that we can release the pressure. So this just loosens up like this. With that loose now, I should be able to just push this down the rest of the way. Maybe I need to... <laughs> there it goes. And more oil is leaking, <laughs> but now we have this all the way down into the cylinder. Let's go ahead and put that cap back on. All right, so I'll slide that on and start to screw this on. And what I think this is gonna also do is just clamp this down to the base here, and that's what's gonna stop it from leaking all the oil. So if someone holds the screwdriver while we twist this bolt on, it makes it a lot easier. It's holding that thread still. It's a lot easier than trying to hold this and do it with one hand. You have that extra leverage. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this bolt up with the big wrench. <clears throat> okay, right there, our nut is nice and tight and we can go ahead and fill this up with oil. In order to refill this jack with uh, hydraulic fluid again, we need to remove this plug. So I found if you just take a pair of wire clippers and just very lightly squeeze this to where it's not like where you're not going to clip it. And then from there you can get a grip and pull that out just like this. And now we have access to this hole. In order to fill it up from here, it can be a little bit tricky. So what I can do is just take a rubber, like a silicone hose like this. These work great. This will go onto the end here. And then this plastic piece fits in there nicely. So then we'll take a cut of the silicone hose about right here. Then we can hold the funnel up here. This will be connected there and we can fill it. So we're going to go ahead and make the cut right here. So we have a smaller usable piece. And then on this side, I'm going to go ahead and slide the funnel on. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this plastic piece in the other end and slide this over. So now we have our little jig here for filling up the jack. We're also going to hold this up just with a piece of wire. So we'll have both hands on the bottle while we're filling and this just makes it a little bit easier. Here's our hydraulic fluid. This is 303. It's some of the cheaper stuff we can get. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this into a smaller container so it's easier to pour into that small funnel. So I'll fill this beaker up and then we'll transfer it. Into Whenever the we start to see the fluid starting to come out of the fill plug here and draining down, we know that it's full. So I'm just gonna fill this up. Gotta go kind of slow here because we've got a small funnel. Hey, 
It took about 10 minutes, and now you can see when I pour some in there, it starts to come out here. So we know that this jack is fully full, now we can go ahead and take out this mechanism and put the plug back in. Before we put the plug back in, we're just gonna run the jack up and down, pump it up, just to make sure we work that oil in and maybe we'll need a little bit more at the end. I can see it starting to come up now. The condition of this cylinder is in much better shape than what it was before. It's not all rusted. So this jacked up just perfectly fine, and now we can go ahead and retract this back down. If I just twist this screw, and it does not have any weight on it because obviously there's not the big metal bar. So to get this to retract down, I'm just gonna push this down. And then it just slides right down nice and smooth. So now we can take out our funnel cap thing. This thing worked great. And we can go ahead and put the cap you back in. You could use a screwdriver or just kind of like your fingernails to put this plug back in. I'll just take that and then carefully pry this rubber back into the hole here. Just like this. So the screwdriver might help getting in these small areas here just to carefully pry that in. And now we have our plug in place and we're ready to go with this pump. It's nice if we just take a wire like this, put it around the cylinder and then just wrap the wire around the back. This just keeps the cylinder from ever wanting to fall. And also, if you're ever using this, make sure that you always put the cylinder down every time you use it. That's what happened here. The cylinder was left up, and the cylinder itself just rusted and corroded and got pitted. So we had to do all this work to get this working again. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.